Alrighty, as I promised now, we're going to talk about thunderstorms. Okay, um, the three stages of a thunderstorm. Who cares? Okay, test purposes they care, certain examiners care. Okay, we have the building stage. So this is when the thunderstorm is forming. Okay, so it's primarily updrafts. The air is mostly moving upward. And it's going to suck you into it. Okay. Hope, why, you know, so again, we're looking at a storm building here, and we have the updrafts moving mostly upward. Okay, that's the building stage or the accumulating stage. We call it the cumulus stage. Okay, cumulus clouds. Okay, uh, let me back up one. What do we need for a thunderstorm? Okay, A. We need to have unstable air. Okay, we also need a lifting action. And we need moisture. Okay, if we don't have all three of those elements, we're not going to get a thunderstorm. Okay, a little bit later I can talk about dry lines, which are pertinent to this part of the country. So if you don't live in Texas or fly in West Texas, you're probably never going to see a dry line. But understanding unstable air, lifting action, moisture. Okay, what can cause a thunderstorm? Fronts moving through, moving the air upward. Uh, hurricanes doing all kinds of screwy things. Uh, fires creating that lifting action, unstable air. We have pyrocumulus. Lillian over here has actually seen that. It was yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, it was uh, cool. Um, but, but these are the elements that we need for that to happen. Okay, so we have to have the unstable air, the lifting action, and the moisture. If you don't have those three elements, you're not going to get a thunderstorm. Okay, so step one is the building stage. Okay, okay, I don't really care. Um, when does a thunderstorm become dangerous? That's ultimately. So if you're looking at a thunderstorm, I don't care what stage it is. Okay, uh, how far should we stay away from a thunderstorm? Mary says 25 miles. 20 to 25, have I ever gotten closer than that to a thunderstorm? Yes. Okay, uh, I've also, back in the dark ages, been about five miles off the edge of a thunderstorm in clear air, and that sucker was throwing hail at me. I didn't much care for it. Okay, so understanding what stage was it in? I don't know, who cares? <laughs> I wasn't under it, so, uh, but understanding it can throw it, throw it away. Okay. Uh, the next stage is going to be um, the mature stage. Okay, mature, what does that mean? When the first precipitation hits the ground. Okay, what's going to happen is I've got droplets going up uh, and they get heavy and they fall, they go up and they fall, they, they go up and down, up and down, up and down. And then at some point in time, this cloud can't, they, the, the droplets get too heavy and they come out of the cloud and hit the surface. Okay, so when the first precipitation hits the surface, that's when the, that's when the storm has gone mature. Okay, now if I'm flying underneath this storm, okay, because it was still in the building stages and they said it was safe. No, it's not, because God only knows when it's gonna be safe and he's not telling. Okay, <laughs> uh, so understanding it's a uh, mature stage, the heavy stuff falls first, typically, because it can't hold it up there, okay? If that storm has gone to 50,000 feet, there's a 100% chance of one inch or greater hail inside of that storm, okay? One inch hail will destroy your airplane while you're in it, flying right underneath there. So we don't want to go there. Again, you know, how tall it is is a factor of how serious it is. That's why some people can get up close and personal with a thunderstorm and not have a bad experience. Other times you get up close and personal with one that's about 50,000 feet, you're going to have a bad experience. Okay, so what's gonna happen here? Once that hail starts to fall, and in Texas we get raindrops the size of quarters, I mean, it comes down uh, in a deluge. Other places, whatever. But again, it, uh, a factor of it is just how tall is it. So, and again, the mature stage, we have updrafts and downdrafts. Okay, what happens is that raindrop or that hail, uh, 
cobblestone starts to fall and it brings a column of air down with it. Now the thing is still moving up, so now we have this up and down thing. So imagine an airplane trying to fly through that. Okay, uh, it literally can rip your airplane apart with you in it. Not a pleasant thing to happen. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Uh, so stay away from the thunderstorms. Okay, then, then we have uh, the dissipating stage. This is when it's a predominantly downdraft. Everything, we don't have anything going up anymore. Everything is going down. Okay, all right, that would be fun. Yeah, how, how all these, all these uh, downdrafts, will they take you to the ground? I don't want to find out. Okay, fair enough. So, when is it safe to go through this thing? Never. Enough said? <laughs> okay, but building mature dissipating stage. Okay, uh, we'd like to talk about wind shear. Okay, when this sucker goes mature, okay, what's going to happen is, uh, and even during the dissipating, but predominantly when it first goes mature, what's going to happen is all we, this my, uh, the water and the hailstones are going to start coming down, bringing that column of air. When that column of air hits the surface, it has to go outward in every direction. Okay, so once you understand where is that thunderstorm and where am I, okay, it's going to come outward from that. Um, how strong? Oh, I don't know. You can ask the Delta flight that crashed at DFW in 1985. Okay, uh, I've encountered wind shear. Okay, for what it's worth, I knew where the thunderstorm was. I was closer than I wanted to be, um, but I was IFR equipped and qualified, trying to go out through a hole. Uh, DFW approach, closed the hole for outbounds, and they told me to go back to land at Love. I was, I could actually see Meacham about three miles away. It's so like, hey, we'll go to Meacham instead, please. They said, okay, I can see the thunderstorm, maybe 10 miles away. Can't tell how tall it is. We're coming into Meacham. I know I'm uncomfortably close to the thunderstorm. I'm in a Conquest 2. My normal approach speed is 120. On that day, I'm doing 160 because I can't. Okay, so I'm doing 160 on final, knowing that the storm is out there. Okay, I'm on about a, I don't know, half mile to one mile final, and my air speed went from 160 to 100 about that fast. Less than a heartbeat. I lost 60 knots of air speed in about half a heartbeat. Okay, so then we can talk about what do you do in a wind shear? Well, power up, get out of there. Okay, power up, do a go around. Yes, they have procedures. You do this, you power up, overcome that, and then you have to power back. Is this a stabilized approach? Nope. Okay, do I want a stabilized approach? Kind of, sort of. Can I manage it? Could I have landed? Yes, but I ch but it was easier, safer, smarter to go around, went around, reevaluated. These wind shears typically don't last very long. Okay, so went around and landed, landed on the opposite end, no harm, no foul, everything was good. But understanding, uh, oh, just for what it's worth, my stall speed in that airplane is 78. If I'd have been doing 120, Okay, I've lost 60 knots of airspeed. So now you're down to 60. Yeah, I'm not, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> so understanding, stay away from thunderstorms. Okay, uh, and then I like to talk about, uh, is he, okay, the airplane I fly um, professionally has onboard radar. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's live. It's up to the second. It's up to the minute. Uh, I can see what's in front of me and I can make decisions based on that. Okay, most of us flying little airplanes, we've got this cool stuff, next rad or my Sirius. I've got all kinds of stuff on my uh, iPad or whatever, my G1000, all kinds of stuff. Sat behind it, love it. However, my next rad, Sirius, all of those, okay. There's a radar station here on Earth and it sends a signal up to a satellite 
and it comes back down to a station that merges those satellite signals and it goes back up to that satellite and then it comes back down to my airplane. Okay, this takes time. So this information is typically five minutes old, but it can be up to 20 minutes old. Okay, uh, I've got a series of photos from a dry line that's set up. We went from the first returns on the clouds to a tornado on the ground in an hour and a half. So, you know, the storms went from almost nothing to 50,000 feet in that 20 minutes. If I'm looking at next rad radar, I don't know what I've got. It, you've got to be looking out the window. Okay, if, you know, if you're a VFR pilot, you can see that sucker, you stay 30 miles away or 25 or like say, but if you're looking at it on your next rad, you've just got to give it a whole lot more room than that. Okay, um, what are the threats from a thunderstorm? Okay, so what are my threats? Everyone says lightning. Yes, lightning is a threat. Um, a lightning strike can hit my airplane. Been there, done that. Uh, put a hole about the size of a quarter in the horizontal stabilizer. It was very expensive for the repairs. Okay, and it did a whole lot of damage to a whole lot of equipment because it'll, it, you know, once it gets into the wires in the airplane, it fries everything. Okay, um, you're like, well, that doesn't sound much fun. I had a, years and years ago, I had a tomahawk parked out on the side, had all the electronic dials. It took a lightning hit. Nothing worked, okay. At least it was sitting on the ground, what a hassle. But lightning is not really going to, it's not, it's problematic, but it's not the scariest thing, okay. Hail. Oh, I think I mentioned that a while ago. <laughs> okay, uh, like I say, when I encountered that hail, it was being thrown at me. It was tiny stuff, less than a quarter inch. Now, somebody's like, what does that feel like? Well, the best description I can give you is imagine yourself in a clothes dryer full of ball bearings on high speed. Okay, it's turbulent and it is loud. Okay, but it didn't hurt the airplane. Okay, it was just scary. Now, that being said, I've seen the pictures where... Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we're live, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've seen the pictures where the uh, leading edge of the airplane was uh, flattened back to the, uh, back to the spar. What's your stall speed when you've changed the airfoil? God only knows, and you're about to find out. <laughs> okay, so understanding hail, um, the rain, not so much. Okay, it's not gonna really hurt, but it does hurt my visibility. But the hail is my biggest one, uh, and the fun one, the turbulence. I guarantee you there's gonna be turbulence under, in, and around that storm. Okay, so we're gonna take a, a momentary break here, uh, move on to the next video.